I'm John Buchanan, and in this episode, what we're going to do is to look at Logic's compressor in a little bit more depth than we have before, because as you've probably noticed, it comes with a multitude of different approaches to compression. Now, before we get into actually listening to this track and putting a compressor on it, it's worth bearing in mind that compressors do different things in a number of different ways. There's a really boringly generalized sentence, but what do I mean? Well, producers put compressors on individual sounds. They put compressors on groups of sounds like drums or strings, and they put compressors on the output stage of a track as well, so that effectively the entire two bus mix passes through a compressor. So us simply putting the compressor on the output channel, which I'm about to do so that we can compare and contrast the different algorithms within Logic's compressor, is only one way in which we can begin to understand how compression can benefit your mixes. What we aren't going to do is to go track by track, adding different compression types and seeing how they add up. Effectively, what we're going to do is just to understand a little bit more about the compressor, looking at it in a stereo output context. So if it turns out that one of these compressor models doesn't sound quite so hot on the stereo output channel, that doesn't mean that it's not of value to you on individual sounds within your mixes. And what I'll try and do is to explain some of the values of when compression might be used on individual tracks as well as we go along. So firstly, let's just listen to the track we're going to be working on, just four bars of it, um, and at the moment there is nothing on the stereo output channel at all. <laughs> such a handy way to turn four bars into eight. Just let it play twice. Okay, so what we're gonna do is to come down to the stereo output channel and within the dynamics folder, I'm going to find the compressor and here it is. And we are greeted with Logic's own version of compression in what's referred to as the platinum digital algorithm. Now, I won't bore you with the history of Logic, but there was a time when it came in bronze and silver and gold. Was there ever a bronze? Anyway, there was definitely a silver and a gold edition, and then there was a platinum edition, and that was the first time that we had plugins. And so effectively, this is kind of like a grown-up version of a previous form of Logic's own compressor, if you like. So what is it good for? Well, actually, it's a really good, handy, all-round, general-purpose compressor. Before we understand exactly what it does, compared to some of the other models that are up here as well, let's just have a very quick compression lesson. So effectively, what compression does is it changes the dynamic range of the signal that it is processing. The way that it works is that sound has to exceed a particular volume threshold. This threshold dial controls that. And above that point, what happens is that dynamics are squeezed or they are controlled. They're brought downwards in terms of their volume. How much that happens is controlled by the ratio amount. So the higher the ratio, the more we're squeezing dynamics out of the portion of the signal which is being compressed. And effectively, what we then have a chance to do is to control how quickly we want a compressor to begin to compress its signals using the attack dial, and then how quickly it recovers from compression as the signal drops back below the threshold point, which is covered by the release dial. So effectively, what we have is a threshold to control the volume above which compression happens, and then those other three dials all control compression behavior above that point. What all compressors do, because the compressed part of the signal is going to make the sound quieter, is they give you what's referred to as a makeup gain dial to allow you to dial back in the volume that you've lost. And at that point, effectively, you can bring the, the, the level of sounds back up to the level that they were, and that means that the quieter portions of the signal will correspondingly get louder. So often, people will refer to compression as a means by which to get extra punch and clarity and power into a mix that only really Really happens when we turn sounds up at the makeup gain stage dial. Never hurts to have a little compressor reminder. Now then, in order to really genuinely compare how these different models are going to sound, what we need to do is to turn off automatic gain compensation. We want to be uh, sort of controlling the overall output level of our mix rather than have Logic choose that for us. So I'm turning that off. And what I'm also going to do is to turn off automatic release. So we're also controlling the release time. 
So let's get back to Platinum Digital. This is a pretty transparent sounding compressor. So what does that mean? Well, it basically means that rather than trying to color the sort of tone quality of the sound, the compressor is basically just trying to squeeze dynamics for you a little bit without inserting too much of its personality into the way that the mix sounds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to configure a little bit of a compression solution for this track. I'm just going to press play, move a few dials around. I'm then going to explain to you what I've done. And then using those same settings, we're going to go through the different compressor models to begin to understand a little bit what they do and how they differ. <laughs> Okay, so what I've done here is I have set up the compressor so that very roughly we are sort of attenuating or reducing the volume by about five decibels. Because of where I've put the threshold point, we can see that the gain reduction needle is peaking at around minus five, which means that we're losing up to five decibels of volume, depending on how loud the signal is that's coming in at any given time. I've set a ratio control, which is just around sort of three to one, a little bit less, 2.8 to one, so that we are able to hear the amount of dynamics that are being reduced without it going absolutely crazy. We're not pushing that too hard. I've set a makeup gain amounts to compensate for the volume that we're losing, that sort of 5 dB mark. But what I've done on purpose is to set relatively quick attack and release times so we can really hear how the compressor responds, how quickly it begins to compress signals, and also giving it time to sort of recover quickly as well so that we're really getting a sense of what the compressor sounds like as it goes through its various stages of compression. Now, for a more natural compression response, I might increase the release time. But what I actually want to do here is to have us really be able to hear the way that the compressor is behaving. And so as a result, I've set quick attack and release times. So what we've got is a relatively transparent compression process here, whereby we're not getting a massive amount of tone change. What I'm gonna do is to turn the compressor off We'll punch it in after two bars. So here is no compression, and then at bar four, I'll put it back in. So what the compressor is giving us is this slightly more robust, glued together sound because all of the sounds are feeding into it and therefore making it respond a certain way. Okay, so what else do we have? Well, we've got, as I say, Logic's own platinum digital model. And rather than just going from left to right, what we're actually gonna do is to look at these compressors in terms of the types of compressor that are available to us in pairings because actually we've kind of got the opportunity to put these together a little bit. And we're actually gonna start with the FET models. So there's one here, which is called Studio FET, and there's one here, which is called Vintage FET, or FET, if you like. Now, effectively, these are both based on versions of the classic 1176 compressor, which has been made by a whole bunch of different sort of manufacturers, but started with Universal um, Audio or URI um, back in the day when effectively um, this model first came to um, sort of attention and it's remained a really popular approach to compression ever since. So the 1176 or FET based compressors have a really quick response time. So effectively they are punchy and they're quite aggressive in terms of the way that they sound. And the principal difference between the studio or sort of black paneled version of this and the silver paneled version of it are tone based. So effectively what we're about to discover between these two settings is actually pretty extreme. We're going to start here and we're going to find that I haven't touched any of these dials by the way. This is just the difference between the way that Platinum Digital and to start with the Studio FET model sound. We're going to end up with a much richer, bigger sound that has just got a bit of tone change in there as well as dynamics change. <laughs> Okay. 
Okay, now you can also see that with exactly the same settings, because this is a different compressor that responds different way, a different way with different sensitivity, if you like, we're actually losing up to 10 decibels of volume with exactly the same settings. So if I actually wanted to use this compressor across the whole mix, I'd probably think that those settings were relatively extreme. And of course, the way that I could change them would be to compress less of the signal by increasing the threshold point and to make some other adjustments too, but in particular, maybe to attack and release times. see how what a difference that makes changing the release time in particular because the compressor doesn't have a chance to completely recover before the next bit of signal comes along to start the compression process all over again at really quick release times then of course it can recover more quickly so in addition to us putting this over the stereo output as we currently are FET compressors are really good if you want to work with anything with a really rapid transient response so drums for sure also, they can sound absolutely fantastic on vocals if you've got something where you want a really kind of punchy, super controlled, upfront vocal sound. Okay, so let's compare that with the vintage FET model. Now this is going to, in particular, change the way that we hear the kind of mid-range, if you like, of this sound. So the main difference between the Studio FET and the Vintage FET models is a tone-based one, and particularly what I want you to do is to focus on the kind of mid-range frequency area and see how that feels compared to the black panel version we've just heard. <laughs> see that I'm having to make adjustments really sort of in real time almost to the threshold point just to make sure that we've got the same amount of gain reduction. But you can also hear that there's a big tonal difference between these two FET models. So even though they're based both on 1176 kind of um, circuits and different eras of that, what we're getting is a different tonal shape as a result. So let's move on to the VCAs. Now the VCAs have an opportunity to be both really quick responding and slower responding than the FET models. Effectively, this one is based very much on a kind of focus right red uh, compression approach. You can see from the design, you only have to go and look at that online to see that I don't think I'm really um, sort of revealing too many secrets there. The knob design, the color, all of it, very much based on that sort of a shape. So what we've got here, is a um, compression type which can be very upfront and punchy. VCAs can absolutely be that. But if we back attack times and release times down, we can end up with something which is just a little bit less in your face than the FET models. Let's have a listen again. Let's just configure some settings that feel like they're responding naturally to the contours of this track. <laughs> to hear that this sounds much more natural when I back down the attack time rather than this kind of aggressive sort of sound that we get from the FET models. When I back the attack time down, we're effectively letting the transients of each of the biggest, loudest hits, the kick drum in particular, and like the moments where the bass and the drums happen together, 
We're letting those through. We're letting those happen, really, before the attack time then, a little bit after that, begins then to compress the signal each time. And as a result, we kind of get this kind of punchy start to each note before then the compressor more generally rounds out the dynamic response after that. So the Studio VCA is, again, more transparent than the FET models, but it's certainly really, again, knitting the mix together really nicely. Okay, let's move on to the next one. So this is very much based on a um, DBX160 model standard of um, sort of VCA compressor. And you'll see conspicuous by their absence are the attack and release dials. We don't get those because they didn't exist on that compressor. So effectively what we've got is instead a relationship between threshold and ratio and makeup gain dials to allow us to kind of configure a response. Now, again, this is a compressor that works incredibly well on drums. It's a sort of classic, quite sort of spanky sounding compressor. But what it's going to do is just give us, well, a lot of energy. So even though this is on the stereo output track, you can see that if I make the effect more extreme, slightly dropping the threshold, massively increasing the ratio, you can hear what I mean about that kind of slightly spanky quality on the drums. It's got a really rapid response. It's really making those transients pump a little bit more than before. Again, let me just take this out for a moment altogether and then I'll punch it in. Okay, so you can really hear, I hope, what I'm talking about there. Okay, let's move on to the vintage VCA. So this is based very much on um, the SSL G-Bus compressor, one of the most famous kind of stereo bus compressors of all time. Um, and um, it's, yeah, it's, it's legendary, basically, simple as that. So again, what we've got here is an opportunity. This is kind of compressor is sort of famous for kind of gluing mixes together. It's a, a, a cliche for me to say out loud, but it's absolutely true that effectively its job was to just make all of the component parts of a mix come together as naturally as possible and just to give a sense of overall glue. Now these settings, I'm going to just back them down to something which is a bit less extreme, back more or less to where we were when we were looking at the Studio FET and the Vintage FET. Um, so effectively what we've got a chance to do is again just see whether or not we can kind of knit things together and make things feel a little bit more natural. <laughs> Okay, and again, changing attack and release values will make a massive difference to the way that this um, and all of the other compressors behave. But you can just begin to hear that there is just a kind of cohesion when we punch in the compression. Uh, the, co the compression. I said it like Sean Connery. Okay, the compression. Okay, um, the compressor settings, when we start to um, just introduce um, compression, we just get the whole mix just feeling a little bit tighter and like the whole thing's being controlled a little bit more. Okay, and that brings us then to the vintage Opto model. So this is based on the LA2. This is, again, a fantastic compressor, very good for mixed buses as we are currently using it. In other words, on the two bus across the whole mix. But this is very much a compressor that people reach for for very natural sounding vocals. Definitely great on bass as well if you just want to make things just feel very natural, but at the same time, somehow just a little bit bigger, but more under control at the same time. So this, again, is a different type of approach. So this is an opto compressor, and it sounds like this. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, so what we've got a chance um, to do when we punch in a compressor, particularly across the output bus, is to basically feed all of the dynamic shapes of the kind of sum of all of the parts within our project together. And what we discover is that whilst compression is ostensibly a dynamics processor for changing the kind of relative volume of all of that summed material, it's only telling part of the story because what we get a huge difference in, as we compare compressor models, is tone. We get a different response to mid-range, bass, treble, the way that feel, things feel, the way that a track breathes. And we have raced through this, even if this video is, I don't know how long it's gonna be in the end, I don't know. But we are still nevertheless racing through all of these models. We're only just beginning to sort of scratch the surface of what happens as we change attack and release times, what happens with the differences between thresholds and ratios, the kind of sweet spot for a compressor in terms of the way that all of those sounds behave. But what we've had a chance to do is to shed a little bit more light on the kind of models of compressor that these algorithms are based on and to begin to discover that different approaches to compression can yield completely different results. And of course, depending on the types of tracks that you're making, it's really worth exploring which one sounds best on your mixes.